of Samaria said, Samaritan said to him, Who, how is it that you being a Jew ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? See, back then Samaritans did have no dealings with the Jews. But Jesus was, as Peter said, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Said to him, How is it you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you know the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would ask, you have, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. And the whole premise of this I want to get is if you drink that water, the water that Jesus will give you, you will never, ever thirst again. And it says in the song, because the words were, And there was a thirsty woman who was drawing from the well. You see, her life was ruined and wasted, and her soul was bound for hell. And as she met the Master, and he told her of herself, or her, of her great sin, and he said to her, if you just drink this water, you'll never thirst again. So let me read my comment on that. But in order to receive his spirit, you must, as it says in John 7, 39, 30, John 7, 37 to 39, you must partake, drink of his spirit. The water you drink here, <coughs> excuse me, the water you drink here on earth will leave you thirsty. But the water Jesus gives you, you will never thirst again. This is, and it's not talking about physical water. You know, you don't turn the tap water on, your physical water runs, and there you go. The water he's talking about springs up, as the Bible said, springs up out of your soul into eternal life. That water that Jesus gives to you is the same water that you find in heaven, as the last scripture said, that flowed from the throne of God. And it was crystal clear. That's the exact same river of water that God gives to Jesus gave to her. And he forgave her of her sins. Jesus says, look, go and grab your husband and come back. And she says, I want that water where I never thirst again. I have to, I have to come back and draw. He says, go grab your husband and come back. She goes, Lord, I have no husband. And he goes, I perceive. And she goes, I have no husband. He goes, that's right, you have five of them. And the one you're with now is not even your husband. She goes, I perceive you're a prophet. But she didn't know that he was the son of God at that time. Because she, she basically, in the next part of the scripture, says that, that the one called Christ will come and show us all the things that we need to know. And he says to her, I am he that you speak of. So he was that Christ. He was Christ. But the water you drink from God, from Christ now, will never leave you thirsty. But no matter how much earthly water you drink, you'll thirst and thirst and thirst. But with this water that God gives to you, you'll never, ever thirst again. So, as it says in John 4, 7-15, but... In order to receive his spirit, you must, as it says in John 7, 37 to 39, you must what? You must partake, drink of his spirit. The water you drink here on earth will leave you thirsty. But the water Jesus gives to you, you will never thirst again. Let's go to our last scripture, shall we? We got four of them this time. And our last scripture comes from Acts 2. 2 through 21. This is going to be a long one, but we're going, to, we're going to go specifically to verse 14. We're going to read the first few parts of this chapter, and then we're going to go, go to, specifically to verse 14. So, Acts 2, 2 through 21. Acts chapter 2. We're going to start from 1, even though it says 2. When the day of Pentecost had finally came, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, verse 2, and suddenly 
There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and came upon and came one and came one sat upon each of them and they were filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance so uh, we're gonna we're gonna go beyond that. We're gonna skip the crowd's response because the crowd basically said, "Oh, you're drunk, and you're this," and they had so many excuses why they spoke in their other languages, in their in their tongues. the The crowd would thought all kinds of crazy things. We're gonna start at verse fourteen. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, "Men of Judah." And all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and heed my words, for theirs for those are for these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. And a little history fact during Jesus during Jesus' time, you were not allowed to drink early in the morning. You were not allowed to, and it was only the third hour of the day, there was rules and regulations and laws that they did not drink. And it was the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it continues. And it shall come to pass in that the last days, says God, that I will pour my spirit on all flesh. So what is he do, going to do? Pour his spirit on all flesh. And at that moment, all of God's spirit was upon everyone in that room. Pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Okay. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my movement. Is that movement? No. On and on my and all my manservants and my handmaidens will prophesy. I'll pour out my spirit upon all those. I'll pour out upon my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I shall show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you look at this day and age, how many times have you seen the moon turn red, bright red? It doesn't mean the last days are here yet. The last days are here, but it doesn't mean it's the end yet. The, the, this is just the end times, the last days. This is when Jesus is going to be coming back real soon. And you can see that the moon has turned into blood. And that it's turned a bright red. It might be beautiful looking, but that's a sign that Jesus is coming back. But it says right here at verse 21, and, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, Peter, speaking of the last days, here's my comments, Peter, speaking of the last days, now, the river, the spirit, that flowed from the grave, that flowed from them, gave them peace and comfort. Because what is the Holy Spirit, the comforter, that will descend after Jesus goes to be with his Father? And whoever drinks or calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it's basically saying that at that moment, a, 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 they heard a sound from heaven, a rush like a rushing mighty wind, and it flowed from them. It says it flowed from them. And it's, uh, I'll read that part again. Uh, verse 2, And suddenly there came a sound, a sound from heaven, 
as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appear then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were filled with the Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay? As the Spirit gave them utterance. So basically, what that means is the Spirit came from their inner being. That river flowed from in them and was coming out of them as they spoke in tongues. Now, does this mean that they spoke in a, in a tongue like I speak in? At that moment, those tongues were native tongues that people understood. But you got to listen to what it says. And it said, There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, that there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. Let me read that to you again. As of fire. Fire. You got you to gotta read the in-betweens because there are people that say, well, uh, divided tongues, you know, yeah. And then they go in, well, it was spoken tongues. It was because people understood their native language. And yeah, he's speaking in my language and he's speaking in my language. But if you think about it, it says right after it says the whole house where they were sitting there, then there appeared to them divided tongues. And if you stop there and don't read any further, it says the pure divided tongues. So that could mean that, you know, French, German, Italian, Portuguese, and all this other stuff. But it continues, and it says, before it ends that sentence, as of fire. So their tongues were not just, you know, they were tongues of, of this world to a degree, but it was tongues of fire. And what is the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is fire. Because if you look at the scriptures, it says, I will send you a comforter. He will comfort you. And it says, and if you look at it, it says also when, when Jesus came, he says, he says, I baptize you in water when he came to John. He goes, but the one, no, John said that I baptize you in water. But the one who will be coming next will not baptize you in water, but will baptize you in fire and water. And what is that fire? The Holy Spirit. And when you look at that fire, that fire is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came upon them at this moment. And it says, I'll read it again. I want you to get this. And there came from heaven the, as a sound of rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And it's again the fire of the Holy Spirit. And it, and it uh, came to them as of fire, it says. It doesn't say it just came to them in tongues of the world. It says as a fire. And if you look at the word fire... In every aspect of the word, it says, I baptize you in, with water. He says, but John says, but the one who comes next will baptize you in the fire of the Holy Spirit. Will baptize you in fire and of water. Will baptize you in fire and of water. He doesn't say that he's just going to baptize you of water or baptize you of the Spirit. He says, I'll bat- he'll baptize you of fire and of water. That fire means something. That fire has a meaning to it. That fires. I'm not going to say it's, it's specifically just you're going to start speaking in tongues. Because not everyone speaks in a tongue. Not everyone speaks in an unknown language. I mean, you can speak in tongues if you know a little German or something. But not everyone speaks in the tongues of the Holy Spirit. Not everyone does. And some people only speak it once and never speak it again. But that fire is not just talking about the tongues. It's talking about the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes into you, that river flows from you. That river which is in heaven that flows from the throne of God flows from you from the Holy Spirit, the fire of the Holy Spirit. And that river flows within you. 
So, with that being said, 